Oh. We should be. There you go. Welcome to tonight's budget committee meeting of May 15, 2018. We have a quorum, so I call this meeting to order. If you'd all stand and recite the pledge to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's... Uh, have ourselves introducing each other, ourselves, uh, Regina. Uh, Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. Frank DeLuca, uh, School Board Representative. Brian Warburton at large. Mike Pluff. And I'm Chairman Jones. And with us we have uh, our Recording Secretary, Barbara Kravitz, and three fine looking gentlemen from Winnicott in High School. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Um, First on the agenda, next on the agenda is the meeting we had with town management. I had a meeting, as, we, as I said at our last meeting, that I would seek to have a meeting with town management to uh, try to minimize uh, uh, any friction points that we might be able to foresee. We got away, we got uh, cleared with certain administrivia, if you will. How do I set up meetings, and, you know, resources, and uh, get the uh, meeting notices out and so forth. We got that cleared away pretty quickly. Had Relatively nice conversation. Regina was there, Tom manager was there, assistant Tom manager was there, finance director was there, uh, myself and our vice chairman. Um, and that's, that's what, did I miss anything other than the fact that we discussed a new protocol um, which uh, has been at least partially implemented. Would you like to discuss that, Regina? Yes, the board approved, I think it was the 7th, that the chairman and the vice chairman would have a communication access or whatever you want to call directly with town management and specifically the finance director yeah. and then NHMA was left out so I have brought that up again to the chairman but he didn't respond to me before last night so I ha I requested it as an actual agenda item for next week oh. so good because those are the two items that we had discussed in terms of making changes correct and uh, there was an agreement on that Brian you might want to sit over there for the screen it's your choice. Uh, welcome, by the way. Um, so the NHMA motion will be coming up uh, next week, I guess. Is what I'm here. Yeah, I requested it to, for it to be an actual okay. agenda item so right. that the selectmen are aware ahead of time. So then you'll have access to uh, the uh, department head, the department heads through the town manager, uh, through either me, Mike Pluff, or Regina yeah. Bonds. And I'm going to get into that in more detail when I talk about um, the uh, Budget Committee Administration. Oh, yeah. Which brings up the next topic. Uh, which basically rules that are just basically, I'm calling this slide, is, is just Budget Committee Administration, which will include rules. And I think it's always important to keep in mind what our purpose is, right out of the RSA, the budget law, is to assist the voters in the prudent appropriation of public funds. This should always be kept in our mind no matter what we do. And of course, for those things that we don't or shouldn't do. My objectives are to have transparency while providing education and advice of substance to the voter. Again, that is our objective. To strive for legal compliance at all times, to ensure all members have essential <coughs> understanding prior to voting on any motion, ensure all members have equal access to information. Avoid unnecessary meetings and or testimony. I, I think we can save a lot of time by avoiding unnecessary meetings, unnecessary testimony. And finally, I, I intend to strive for a consensus to avoid unnecessary motions. So that's what I'm going to try to achieve. Uh, and that's what these uh, uh, the administration concepts are, are behind all that principle. Now, last year we had um, NHMA, or the Board of Selectmen had NHMA come in and do a seminar on 91A. A portion of that uh, presentation was a discussion on minutes and the essence of it, and I have a video if you want to play it, it's about f four minutes, but uh, essentially what it says is uh, minutes are not required to be approved by law. There's no 
reference to approval in law to minutes, okay? Uh, our past practice of approving minutes is, is lawful, but it's not required, okay? So uh, one of the motions that we can avoid, that we don't need to do, is the motion to approve minutes. We certainly can amend them if there's a need to. So it's really, I leave that up to the body to uh, give their opinion on that, whether we should continue or save time and not have the motion at all. Any thoughts? I would make a motion to accept the minutes as written as we have done it. You want to maintain present practice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I'd like to make a motion to, you know, expedite our meeting process by eliminating the vote to approve the minutes. Mm -hmm. Mike? Well, we, we discussed this a little bit. Uh, if somebody has something in the minutes that they would like to change or that they didn't say or some, some glitch, then certainly we should mm -hmm. let them bring that up and and have it amended so that they can have the right language in there. I, I don't think there'll be a lot of changes, but there could be some, and numbers can get written down with transverse to something. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, so be needed, little things yeah. that need to be cleaned up. So we we still should look them over. Mm -hmm. I think. I, Right. I, I kind of like that approach because it's one thing for approval, but you're talking about a historical record. So if there are changes to be made, I'm all for moving things along. I mean, I think I've watched all the meetings, right? So if there are questions on minutes, which doesn't seem to be that many, but if there are, I don't think it's going to take that long. Say, Mr. Chairman, can we amend sentence whatever, whatever. To, and then move on? I, I like the idea of what you're proposing. I, I just think that remembering that approval is kind of separate from the historical record, but I certainly have no problem with what you're saying. And if people had an issue with adding a sentence here, it takes, what, a minute or so and just move on. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think it's the same amount of time is spent just approving the minute. I agree. Because I mean, it, yeah. it is public document. Right. Yep. And so, I mean, yep. what does it take us? 35 seconds to say yes, no, or if there is going to be a change, then so yep. be it. Absolutely. Regina? Yeah, I'd say that I'm good with reviewing them, but you know, not necessarily if we legally don't have to approve them, then mm -hmm. I'm okay with not making the approval motion. Yeah. I can assure that at every meeting there'll be an opportunity for a member to bring up amending uh, prior minutes. Um, if that makes everyone comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, are you okay with that? I know it's a change from where we've always done it. It could be a little uncomfortable for that reason alone. But uh, you okay with that? If we just uh, assume no. they're good and, and let someone bring, raises an issue? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, absolutely. Great. I'll consider that a consensus then. We won't waste our time with that motion, but we will entertain any comments that anyone wishes to make at any time on any minutes mm -hmm. and possibly offer amendments. Okay. Meeting rules, largely the same as last year, what I call a LaBranch standard. Uh, you know he's not here to verify that it's his standard. <laughs> uh, speak only when recognized by the chair. Speak only in context of the present topic. Calling a vote on all motions at the discretion of the chair. Vote tallies determined by the chair. Request for appointments. This is a little bit of a, a new thing, I think. A slight variation. Request for appointments from non-members to be granted by the chair if the request is denied then subject, it is subject to a majority vote. So the majority vote can overrule the chair if the chair denies someone's request to have an appointment. Okay? Um, and then the, the final twist here is, you know, during our public hearing, which occurs in January, traditionally, mm -hmm. although we may very well have one this summer, <laughs> yes. uh, motions for reconsider reconsideration of votes can only be made by those members who were in the majority on the previous vote. Now, the extra change here that I'm proposing is in case there is a tie in the previous vote, there, of course, there's no majority, and so we're deadlocked and no one can make a motion to reconsider, which is something we ran into a couple of years ago, and 
I wanted to make this change last year, but it didn't quite sell for whatever reason. I'm still proposing it this year. In the case of a tie in the previous vote, any member who voted previously may make the motion to reconsider. So uh, that's the nutshell of the rules uh, that I would suggest. Uh, any thoughts, comments, uh, modifications? Brian? Let me think about this. All right, I'll uh, go to the other Brian. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can play this, this, this will be interesting. <laughs> Brian or Brian? <laughs> Mr. Lapple, do you have any thoughts on that rule that's proposed? Um, <laughs> no, I don't. You okay with them? Okay. Regina? I think they sound good. I'm okay, okay with them. Frank? I'm fine with it. I'm okay if it's legal, and I'll tell you why I say that. It has always been the case that if you're going to reconsider a vote, the, the person who moves the reconsideration has to be in the majority. Mm -hmm. The second it could be one that wasn't. So you're saying... I, I guess, does it defeat the purpose of why we had a reconsideration in the first place if anybody can do it? I mean, if we're on good legal ground, I don't, once again, I don't have an issue with it, but I know that traditionally it's always been the person who reconsiders has to be from the majority vote. Second, it could be if Brian, for instance, was on the minority. That's all I'm saying. If we're on good legal ground, I have no problem with that. You might want to ask that question. Okay, any further thoughts? Well, I would agree with that. Okay. Well, uh, I, I would agree that there is a legal consideration that has to be more fully made. Yeah. Um, I would point out that both the ma motion maker and the second seconder are both motion makers, and both must be in the majority. And that has been the way we've been operating for the last few years. Um, if you make a second to a motion, you are part of the making of the motion. Thus, you are a motion maker. Okay. So, that, with that twist, I basically agree with you. The problem comes down to this. If we have a tie vote, mm. then we're deadlocked. And no matter what the public says to us, we cannot change our vote. Because there is no majority. Well, a tie vote, in essence, is no vote. Right. So, you're not reconsidering anything. No, we've made, it, we've made a statement. It actually shows up on the ballot as not recommended, say, 4-4. Uh, yeah, I, like I said, I mean, if it's, stand, if it's on legal ground, I'm fine. But when you say that we've been doing it this way, I, I can tell you a tie vote has never been, that's not a vote. I mean, it's just not a vote. Well, that's the problem we had a couple of years ago. Yeah. All right, and it produced a lot of argument. Um, and we did not have any, any uh, consideration for tie in our rule. Right. Um, I am aware from my own memory, cobweb-wise, cobweb memory, <laughs> that there's something in the law about that, right? Um, I'll, I'll have to revisit that and check that, but... Uh, I would check that, and let me just comment again, because you brought up a nice point. If you reconsider a vote, the first vote has to be a majority. The second one could absolutely still be the majority, but there could be that second that somebody's in the minority, but the absolute first one has the to second, be... The second, the Second, the motion. Right. The one that has to be... Do, has that, to, that is not clear to me. Yeah, it... Mm -hmm. It was always the case, and that's what I said. It might be good to ask. That's the a town procedural council. thing. I mean, if it's not in the law, then it's up to us to make a rule right. about it. Because think about it: if you're on the losing vote, why are you going to reconsider? Why is the law going to allow you to reconsider? I mean, it's, I'm just saying what it used to be. If it's le if you're on legal ground, I'm fine with all of this. I, I just would, I just think we should be clear because right. if we get into these situations, we've got nine members now. We're down to the nine that the voters have voted in, mm -hmm. which is an odd odd number. But I could see nights where we have eight people here. Yeah. And it could get a little. So I, I just want to be clear going forward. But you're bringing up some great points. I just kind of if we could just kind of fine tune it, I'm all for it. I'll I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll check the law. I haven't recently done so on this point. Um, and so my memory, as I said, has cobwebs on it. But I am quite I certain a lot to the go. person making a second is is a mo motion maker by definition. And if there is a law about that, it applies to both the seconder and Could the be right. primary motion maker. Yeah. Uh, we stand, and we've practiced it that way for the last few years, too, by the way. Okay, uh, yeah. Right. I right. did come up with one thing. Yeah. And I don't know if it's legal or not. Um, in the past, after we've had the public hearing, we have always met on any articles, money warrant articles, mm -hmm. after the meeting to say, okay, do we want to change our votes? 
doing not, etc. We didn't do it this past year. Yeah, we did. Nope, we didn't. I was at the meeting, and we did not go through that that process. We did. And I'm just wondering, is it something we created or the state? I've been trying to look it up. No, last year we did. Last year we broke up the public hearing uh, into different seg uh, sections. Right. Like we did the flood p uh, topics first. Right. And then after we heard the public on the flood topics, uh, there was an opportunity for... Uh, Reconsideration. No one had made a motion for reconsideration, but the opportunity was there. And then there was some. Then we went to the body of the remainder articles, and right. and we did have. I think we, we had, had a, two. Changes. We had a reconsideration on the sidewalks. They yeah. haven't made all sidewalks. Yeah. So yeah, we did do reconsideration after hearing from the public. So yeah, we did follow that. But it didn't change. No, it didn't. It didn't change. It. It, it didn't. I, I don't we didn't follow. go through the formality of. We did. If we were going to make a change or not, is what I'm saying. Oh, you and mean I'm the saying, motion to reconsider? We definitely had a motion to reconsider. No, it wasn't a motion to reconsider. Yeah, I'm was. just saying, we'll bring it up later. It was the end of the year type. I got of the video for it. I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> it's in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my computer. <laughs> Which is probably a lot better than my head. <laughs> he has a lot of RAM and about 80 gigabytes, right? Maybe 300 gigabytes. <laughs> okay, so those are the meeting rules subject yeah. to right. uh, yeah. a le Absolutely. another legal check. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Okay? I have no problem okay. there. All right, now here's the fun part with Regina and me. and Our requests for uh, this relative to requests from the town, uh, not the other two entities. Uh, by the way, guys, the other two entities we deal with here is SAU 90, the Hampton School District, which is grades up to grade 8, right? Correct. That's right. And the other one is the Hampton Village District, often improperly called the precinct. Um, in any case, uh, this is just for the town. Uh, and uh, requests uh, can be made from any body on this team, this, this uh, committee to any member of the leadership team. The leadership team is the chairman, the vice chairman, and the selectman's rep, okay? So you don't need to make the request in the meeting. Right, Regina? Correct, yeah. You can send us email, send one of us an email, call one of us on That's the good. phone, okay? And then it's up to us on the leadership team to coordinate with each other so that we don't, you know, uh, so we know what each other's doing right. and we don't have the same question going through uh, multiple times, right. okay, uh, but we, those requests will be directed through the town manager or the or the finance director as appropriate, right? right yeah. yeah. Pretty much what I do anyway as a selectman. It's right. the town yeah. manager. I go to a finance. So. Uh, well, see, with the steps we've yeah. saved here from the past is in the past we had to actually make a formal decision in the budget committee, which means we had to wait for the monthly meeting, and then we had to request the selectman's rep ask the question to the Board of Selectmen, right. and then the Board of Selectmen approves it to be sent to the town manager, all right? So all of that was, was eliminated. So we're saving, all, eliminating a lot of friction points in doing that and getting answers to our question more efficiently, okay? And this would be a very, very similar thing with uh, once NHMA motion is, is made and approved by the Selectmen, it would be a similar process with NHMA, right, Regina? Correct. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming, yeah. yeah. So that's that's what we're looking at. Uh, I th we had a consensus when we met with town management on that, and we assume that it will be a blessed. And so we'll have access once again to NHMA well going through the board of selectmen and bothering them over rather minor stuff often, I suppose. Okay, um, I said all this. Yeah, and the requests and the associated responses from those requests will be made known to the Italian membership this is under the objective that we all have equal access to the same information. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, well, this member knows it, but nobody else does kind of stuff, which sometimes goes on. We want to avoid that. Okay, the budget calendar, uh, an exciting topic. I spent <laughs> considerable time on this already, uh, <laughs> probably more than my wife would be uh, happy about, I assure you. Okay, basically I've taken the 2018 calendar and made some modifications. Uh, and right now I've got the uh, um, calendar. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. Uh, 
modifications were for holiday adjustments, the holiday and Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Christmas change, um, and budget hearings. Um, we're going to be meeting in the, in the uh, public hearing. Traditionally, we meet in the academy cafeteria, right? Cafeteria, yeah. Not anymore. At least not. I hope not. There's no reason for the cable committee to go through all that setup work and then all that breakdown work for a meeting in which very few people come to speak. And when you look at it, most of the people there are either working on cable TV or they're working for the town, their department heads, and so forth. Aren't they already set up for that? What? Uh, the cable committee? Well, they have to go set up all the equipment at the cafeteria. Yeah. So that's I want to yeah. avoid all that that's, exercise. That's off site compared to here. Yeah. Mm. And so, and I'll get into the problems and challenges and how I, how we propose to address them. Uh, I'm going to pop over to here now. I'm going to introduce you to a website which has not been published out on the internet yet. It's on my computer. Okay. Uh, so don't anyone panic. It's you remember oldhamptonbud.com, right? Okay. Well, uh, the uh, calendar is is based on these important dates. Now, these important dates are coming from the law, as you can see. Uh, all of these dates are embedded in law. Deadlines for this, deadlines for that. So, go ahead, Frank. Make it larger. <laughs> yeah. The <completed> dates. <laughs> How's that? Okay. Want it larger still? No, no, fine. Fine, thank you. So uh, essentially, this is just uh, the deadline for petition articles that include bonding, and this is the uh, deadline that we have for putting out a public meeting notice, which is January 8th, and this is the deadline also January 8th for our petition warrant articles that are not binding, are bonded. And January 15 is the deadline in which we must have our public hearing. Now, I put in all this verbiage in here. Essentially, what that says is that you have to have an honor before the third Tuesday in January. So, that is the uh, third Tuesday in January, January 15. Okay. Now, you can continue to have the meeting if you recess, don't adjourn, but recess this meeting, all right, and specify when you're going to reconvene at a specified time and location okay. without having to give the required meeting notice of two weeks. That's the key. Okay. So in consideration of no one likes going up to Hampton Academy and sitting at what I like to call the Last Supper. <laughs> you know, you sit at that table, it looks like we're all at the Last right, Supper, doesn't right, it? Yeah, right. <laughs> And no one can see each other, and everyone's confused about who's saying what and who's voting what way and whatnot. So I thought, well, gee, it'd be much better if we had it here. All right? There's one problem with that, and that is what if we have a large number of citizens wanting to come in to speak? Okay? And then we have the other issue of the snow. If we have snow and I need to recess the meeting, how do I be sure I have a quorum so that I can call the meeting open and then recess it immediately to the snow date? All right. So there's what Mike comes in with his big trucks. Mike has agreed <laughs> to take his big truck out and go collect five of us <laughs> to come here, open the meeting, and then recess it, and then go home. Okay. And so that we've got the snow date covered. Now when it comes to a large number of citizens coming to this room that can't accommodate them, we have a contentious article or two or three or whatever. We'll probably know ahead of time. Uh, but even if we don't, if they show up, we'll find out what they're, what they're here for primarily. And uh, if there's enough of them, we can say, okay, we're going to reconvene this meeting at this time and location. In the meantime, we're going to take care of all the other Warren articles. And when we reconvene, we're going to be there just to listen to you. So you're going to have our full attention. Right. So I think it's a, it's a good compromise uh, for the citizens that are coming. Even though they might be a little inconvenienced, they're going to be better heard because we're going to be in you know, a better frame of mind because we're not going to be exhausted going through all these uh, emotions that we have to go through. So that's my general theme. Okay. Any thoughts on that? I, I think it's an excellent idea. I've said for years um, it's a lot of work for the academy yeah. to set up. Mm -hmm. Frank has staff, his principals have staff that have to stay late 
they're, they're, it's a cafeteria. They're going to put the chairs in order and, and back. And I can tell you in the last 25 years, and I've probably missed three or four of them, but before that, if we had more than three residents mm -hmm. uh, or four residents, and I think, it, it, Mr. Chairman, you bring up another great uh, statement, and that is this room has the setup for the conduciveness right. around the table and in the audience. Mm -hmm. So we have, let's say we have 30 people. Regina, uh, Selectman Barnes can tell you, we've had people standing up here and they've right. still had enough room to speak. Right. So I, I think, I, I love hearing that. I've been saying for years, that it, you know, going to another venue. Um, let me ask one quick question. So I, I want the public to be clear too. When you talk about deadline of January 8th, are we getting into, uh, are we at that point where we're gonna specify deadlines of times? Because it always was the case that the Warren articles had to be in by five o'clock, but we had an issue two years ago where somebody showed up at eight o'clock and put a Warren article at the public hearing. I think we have to be very clear because you know residents need to know: is it going to be good for them and others? Let, let us be right up front, right away. So, well, this is what actually yeah. spurned this consideration in its entirety. You know, two years ago, and for the last several years, we've been having our public hearing meetings the night after the final day. Yeah. for p petition submissions. Right. So when they come in late, we're totally blindsided, and like we were two years ago. Sure. Absolutely no one had a clue that that Warren article was coming in. It was a fairly big big Warren article. And it, it got people upset, frankly. You know, it was this last-minute routine. Um, After we had a battle the year before over that same subject. Right. Yeah. And, right. and so one of, the, one of the problems I had, because I've been raising this with prior chairmen almost every year, you know, why we haven't so, and their argument has always been, well, what if it snows? We need to have time because we have this two-week notice thing. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I found in the law a way around that by... Recess. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so with that in play, we can now wait not one day, but eight days after the deadline. This gives us a much mm -hmm. larger window of opportunity to see what's in the pipeline, mm -hmm. okay? Um, did I address what you were... Yeah, yeah and, and I think it goes back to, and, and I'm a, I'm a, big stickler for rules and regulations and if it's you know five o'clock on the friday before filing ends and, and you come in at 505 you don't get to sign up for office we have the same requirement which has been back to the early days of history of hampton at 5 p.m <coughs> has been the submit submittal date submittal time and the date posted well Brian, I, we're going to be clear here because you know, Tom Anders used to say every year, we're, you have until 5 p.m., 5 p.m., right. 5 p.m. Well, yeah. well, it turns out the actual law says you have till midnight. And that's what I was going to say. So as long as the that. public, that's correct. Yeah. Well, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But as long as the public knows that, that somebody well, could come in at 7 o'clock. Well, since that upset two years ago, the Tom Anders has now been making that point. Okay, so good. He's, yeah. That's he's all I'm saying, as long as everybody. we communicate. Yeah. Right. right. That's so good. The Tom Thank Anders you. has made a more clear statement annually on that. So Thank you. 1150 dollars yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's but I right. like your idea uh, about the recess. Absolutely. Okay. And, and plus, you're on live TV. Yeah. So a lot of people watch this, and they're going to know right away that, oh, I don't have to get in my galoshes and come down to town hall. And Mr. Chairman has said the date is going to be the following. I think people will be fine with that. We may, we may even decide. I mean, it's possible that, you know, we may observe that some Warren article or a collection, a small collection of Warren articles, are going to in, in, uh, engender a lot of people wanting to come in. So we may actually in advance tell them, you know, we're going to actually have two separate hearings, and this separate hearing is going to be just for these one articles that are going to be topical. Uh, we may want to do that, and we'll see how things progress. But we have uh, uh, until January 23 mm -hmm. to finish our work, because on January 4, 24, as you see, we have to submit our results to the selectmen. That's that's a drop dead deadline on the statute. Well, I, I just want to compliment Selectman Barnes too, because I have to tell you, and she does a great job communicating and announces meetings on a regular basis, whether it's local, mm -hmm. statewide, countywide issues that are important to us, and that, and she does a good job at that. And I think that's what the, the public is so right for that now. I mean, whether it's through social media or additional communicative needs, I think it's great, and I. I applaud um, Selectman Barnes because I, I'm, I'm about all about communication. That's why in 96 we sat here and we got the cable going. And, and I think it's just so great that we do that. And I like where we're going with all of this. So, so normally we get these important dates from NHMA, but they hadn't done them yet for 2019. 
So I had to go through the law and calm them out. And while I was doing that, I thought, you know, there really ought to be a program for this. Mm. So I wrote one. You, you wrote one. And so that's where you see this here. You can actually select any year, and it will give you the dates for that year. Wow, that's great. Very nice. That's very nice. So it's that's data, cool. Data arithmetic. Okay. That's, that's great. So, yeah. It makes the job easier for the poor chairman who's going to follow me to, <laughs> <laughs> to not have to deal with this nightmare <laughs> that I have had to deal with. Okay, so uh, now for the actual uh, meeting schedule. Um, these are all the dates that I have reserved. They, they are reserved, <coughs> period, with, with one exception. I have not contacted SAU 90 yet to get uh, reservations for the uh, Hampton Academy cafeteria. Um, oh, those reservations are all snow dates anyway. I cannot imagine that we're going to have a crowd that cannot be accommodated in here. I agree. Given that we're going to have multiple dates possible anyway. Absolutely. But still, I thought, you know, just to be on the safe side, let's get them reserved. And uh, so they're on this list. Uh, and these uh, department references in here are all just grabbed from last year. They're, they're, they have no commitment of any kind. Just put it in placeholder. Yeah. yeah. Placeholder, exactly. And the other thing on this is uh, our first workshop is scheduled for November 6th, as you see. Um, and I believe, Regina, when we met with town management, that they agreed that we would have the budget books done uh, by that date. Like, <laughs> like yeah, I think Friday they before. said, I believe Christy did say Halloween. Yeah, so. right, right. So we can be sure to have it. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so if she says so, I'm, pretty, I tend to believe sure. that we will have them. Yeah, yeah. right. So we've got... Uh, Let's see, five, four, three, two. We got. We we'll definitely have them. Uh, books published on Friday, uh, uh, prior to this meeting on the sixth, right? And um, if you want, we can make a motion saying we request that. Um, but I don't feel that's necessary, do you, Regina? I don't feel so. No. Yeah, yeah I don't. Um, also, there was a commitment. Via uh, request that I might made that you know we've been getting the Excel spreadsheet the the budget book is generated through an Excel spreadsheet okay and we've been getting a copy of this Excel spreadsheet and so I requested uh, from Christy whether or not she could send that Excel spreadsheet in advance of publishing the book because it takes her several days to publish the book yep. so it it ought to be a few days at least before we actually get the physical book that the Excel spreadsheet will be available to us. So we'll be able to start reviewing the numbers, okay? Yeah, as long as we still get the spreadsheet. Yeah, we're gonna get the spreadsheet first this time, yeah. and then the budget book. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I've already noted the first public hearing begins on January 15, right? Okay. So I think I've exhausted myself regarding let me confirm that by looking at this thing here. Yes, I did. I've exhausted myself when it comes to budget administration, budget committee administration. Uh, any general thoughts or comments on what you've just heard about the administration of this committee? No rotten eggs with right me? <laughs> no. Nope. Absolutely. Okay. No, Absolutely. I, I like it. Okay. I do too. Yeah. It's very yeah. streamlined, very positive. Yeah. Very readily upbeat. available. <laughs> Good job. Twelve Good job. twenty-six in here for a meeting. Uh, do I? Yeah. Well, let me, is, let me check. Is that, that a boo boo? Or What's is that, that, Mike? Twelve twenty six. Day oh, yeah. after Christmas. <laughs> it's a snow day. It's uh. Yeah, that was the other thing. You for bringing that up. Okay. Um, it's also a Wednesday too. Traditionally, <laughs> you know, we all have budget committee meetings on the third Tuesday of every month, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, sometimes. Maybe a Wednesday. The third Tuesday of the month is like the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've had that before. Guess what? We've had the meeting anyway. I'm not real thrilled with that, and uh, and so if you look at the, uh, the calendar here, I've got meetings scheduled for uh, the 28th because uh, Thanksgiving's on the 24th. Yeah. The 28th, uh, December 4th, December 6th, December 13th, December 18th. I believe that as we approach November, uh, we can decide we're not going to have Thanksgiving week meeting, so we can all enjoy Thanksgiving week like we ought to. Yeah. Okay, 
So I just want to throw that out to you. That's my objective. And as far as the day after Christmas is concerned, <laughs> hmm. I, I, I expect that th that Christmas week will also be uh, yeah. held sacrosanct, but our work has to has to really dictate it, so right. we'll have to wait until. Okay, so that's just a snow day. Yeah. Okay. No panic, okay, I was just. No, I thank you for bringing that questioning up. Questioning it. Okay. Anything else on the administration of the committee, Mr. Levin? You look like you have something. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> he changed that to I don't. I don't. You all set? You happy? You happy, man? <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our representative's report, and that would be Mr. Frank DeLuca from SAU 90. Tell uh, us about monetary considerations from SAU 90 we should be aware of. Uh, none at this time. Thank you for that very succinct report. Any questions on that answer. report? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no questions for SAU 90. Regina, second okay. report. Well, last night we got a pretty big update on the uh, mosh pipe scenario. So we are decided to pursue, instead of seeking the court for a special town meeting, we're going to seek the legislator. You mean the general court? The general court. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to seek the legislative body. Um, this has been done, I guess, three times in the past in New Hampshire. And this will drastically condense the time frame for the town meeting. So instead of having to wait all the way until November, which we wouldn't be able to do any type of work this year. This would give us a date of occur on or before August 28th, 2018. So the legislative session, um, they close, I think, the 24th. So we made the motion 24th of May. the 24th of May. So this is going to be pretty quick, hopefully. We'll, I think they were working on trying to get it in today. Uh, it's going to go to the Senate. We can thank the New Hampshire Senate for, uh, you know, doing this for us, and I believe our former senator had a huge deal to do with it too. So, we will see and wait for that. Town management. A few weeks ago, we had given a majority vote to, you know, town management was going to be extremely proactive in talking with all the state departments, environmental services, DOT, as far as getting permits and all that fun stuff. So they have done that over time, and it's worked out really well. I believe DRA is actually the ones that recommended us to pursue this legislative process. So I guess we're just waiting for hopefully they can get the bill in. It will pass through both bodies, and we will be able to have a town meeting. But as far as the dates go right now, I'm not sure what they're going to look like for the, for the hearings for us and for the town. So. Anything else? I don't think so. Do you guys have any questions on what's going on? That's what I was going to ask you. Anybody? Questions? Brian, Mr. Lapham? Mr. Bluff? Mm, no, I, I think you're headed in the right direction. Mm. It's just... And the state, you know, yeah, worked well. They, they really helped us out. Yeah. So we worked together, and that's the way it should be, if you ask me. I think right. that it's not just the town that's at stake here. No, no. Mm. Lots of millions of dollars are at stake. So I'm really excited. I'm glad that... It seems like we're making some progress, so hopefully we'll. Uh... Mr. Walbert, I think uh, excellent meeting last night, um, but I think it's like when Waddell alluded to about the, you know communicating the correct information. How needy this is to have the pipe. It's very needy. So the questions that are going to be asked, and I think we need to start now. I mean, we talk about a special town meeting. Do we go through the same? This is a uh, hypothetical. Do we go through the, through the same process? Deliberative session, a, a public hearing, deliberative session, an actual vote, mm -hmm. you know, an actual like a voting day. The reason that's critical, August 28th, by the way, happens to be a Tuesday. I can't imagine we'd have a special town meeting on a Tuesday. But we are we going to be required to have the three fifths since it's going to be a bond? Mm. So. And that's all important because even though a lot of people are around in the summer, a lot of people aren't around. So right. I'm all for it. I mean, I, I think, and I like the, the caveat of the plastic pipe, the, the surface pipe that you're going to put in. That's very important because sure. and that's, that's the only backup we have for the summer of 18, really. And if my understanding through conversations last night, within 11 days, we would commence 
with putting that surface pipe in? Because yes, the state gonna... is not going to, June and July, I'd be surprised if there's going to be, you know, any sort of construction. But would it, we get going on this? Town management is, I asked the question, I said by the first week in June, and they said yes, probably right. before that. So they're right. thinking 11, 12 days, but if you know 11, 12 days in the middle right. of the summer, might as well be 11 months. Right. So if we can get it done before June and before everyone starts getting here, it will be a very good idea. My only question was, excuse me. No, go ahead. Um, was when we were going to vote on having the meeting, if we were going to have a special meeting? Well, we're gonna, we are going to have a special town meeting, but we don't, we're not sure about the dates. There is going to be a okay. deliberative session, but I think it's condensed so we don't have to wait. Is it, what's the time point usually has to be between deliberative session and actual voting day? 28 Two, days. Yeah, it's 20, usually like a Yeah, yeah it can be, month. so we can have the deliberative session we're shooting Polly for the Saturday like we always do. So whatever that Saturday is before the 28th, and then we can immediately have the next Saturday mm -hmm. have the vote, or whatever day, I guess, is decided well, on. I think that you really pointed out something great last night, and that's where the public needs to feel comfortable. The surface pipe is what we need right now. We know if with special town meeting approves getting rid of what you've referred to, I mean, these all right. awful pipes, that's not going to be done right away. So as long as everybody's assured that that service pipe's actually going to do pretty well, that new plastic they're using, and that word gets out. Because, you know, some people may say, oh, geez, if the town meeting doesn't, and hypothetically, right, so let's say things got disapproved or, or, or put off, we're still going to have that surface pipe. So the public needs to understand that that's a great move, what you did last night, because I think that's going to well, carry that, us. Well, that has to cover us everything. Right? That's correct. But at least for the summer months, it's going to carry us forward. And, and so great discussion. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the next steps, because I think we as a budget committee, certainly as, as people who prepare and assist in, in giving budgets to the to voters on a yearly basis now are going to be in a position really should be a proponent of this 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 is absolutely necessary and uh, so good good job yeah just what just here watching the next step so good luck yeah right. I mean I think really the reason why it got done so well is because it was sort of done you know I want to say not not officially but you know it was just everyone communicated with each other you right. know Moved it like along. all the you know it yeah. wasn't like a legal thing it was just you know this is what you want us to do this we want to do this. How can we get the vote so that the voters can say, I mean, they have to say yes. And I mean, oh, I'm going to do my best to sell it. Yeah. And yeah. I hope that, you know, a lot of people will help me do that. But good. Frank, Thank any you. questions on the selectman's report? Statement, comment? No comments. No okay. Brian, Mr. Lapham. Um, the only question I had from last night's meeting was the, um, the piping. Um, one is insulated, one is not? Well, no, what the question was, because the uh, auxiliary pipe, so the temporary pipe right. that we're going to put up this year, what we're being told right now is it's going to have to come down in the winter because right. it's not going to be insulated. So Chairman Bridal asked the question of whether or not it would be possible right, to get right. that pipe insulated, and I think that's probably what Jamie and Fred are working on today yeah, but apparently they didn't think they, that could happen yeah it doesn't because they they told us from the beginning that if we had that auxiliary pipe down that it would freeze and it would have to come down because it doesn't know. pump all the time it only right. pumps and then it shuts off so we it will freeze we need to the cost of that if you uh, when you guys are going yeah, I mean, through it all the way i look at it is the ideal situation is they'll start with the auxiliary pipe you know hopefully yeah. by the end of this month it won't be insulated. We'll put it up and it will be the back. Oh, I guess we'll actually probably use it because we don't want to use that pipe unless we have to. So we'll have the auxiliary pipe and then the older pipe that's under there still. And then, I mean, I don't know if the, we can probably start construction, I guess, after the vote goes through, maybe this fall, ideally, yeah. and then finish up in the spring. So that at least in 19, hopefully we'll have everything if the voters say yes, we'll have everything ready to go for the summer of 19. Okay. Thank you. I uh, had a conversation with uh, Jamie this afternoon on, on this topic. And we also discussed uh, this at our meeting with the town management that we had a couple of months ago. Um, <clears throat> 
And what I got from Jamie was the parameters of the legislation, which means there will be a public hearing. There will be session one. Yeah, exactly. Also called deliver session. Right. There will be a session two, also called the election, which is normally held on Tuesday anyway, so it ought to be. Well, on that's Tuesday. true. Yeah. 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 And, and the dates will not be condensed in the sense of there'll be the 28 days, the eight days we call prior to that session one, there'll be public hearing by the budget committee. Um, what is being condensed, or proceeds proceed to be condensed, is not to have to go through your traditional court docket to get on the docket and get heard, right? Because you're going directly to the general court. The legislature. The legislature. Yeah. Uh, and, and they can make up whatever rule they want to, um, I assume they won't change the basic rule, which is uh, three-fifths majority required. I assume they won't change, and, and Jamie said the parameter, Jamie told me anyway, the parameters of the legislation they seek includes the public hearing, includes session one, includes yeah, session I two. I believe that. I, okay. Uh, I think it'll be a hard sell politically for them to do otherwise, and I think it'd be a hard sell for them up to the Senate, up to the State House, to not include the three-fifths as normal operating procedure. Well, if you go the bond route, you're required to. Right, yeah. right exactly. It's and, not and even there is there is the bond route. I also talked to him about um, um, or suggested to him, and he thought it might be worth ex further exploration. We have somewhere between six and seven million dollars in the unassigned fund balance, so-called surplus, uh, and I suggested that I'd probably use like maybe two million or slightly more to reduce the bond requirement thus reduce the resistance to the article itself. Okay, it will really enhance the ability to get that thing passed. Right? And it will also reduce the burden of tax that the bond will produce. Because this will be substantial and then we're looking at something on the order of five to six million dollars, I understand. Certainly no less than four. Um, so it's a substantial bond. Not the biggest we've ever seen, no. but you know no. we're already we're now paying the biggest we've ever seen. Right. And to add on top of that, right. people are already sensitive. You know, I'm getting I'm getting notices in my mailbox. I don't know if you guys did, about from realtors telling me that mm. with skyrocketing taxes now might be the best time to sell. <laughs> that wasn't my word. That was you know Preston Real Estate's word. <laughs> we got the same one. Did you? Yeah. So, I mean, this is just going to add to that burden. Um, and so, if we actually use some of the unassigned ba fund balance and still be comfortable with the remainder in there, uh, I think it would go a long way to, a, you know, um, limiting the resistance to the article. I think everyone agrees that we need to do the work, right? I don't think there's any question about that. The question of, you know, how do we fund it? And the timing of that funding is the only thing that's really been subject to discussion, as far as I can tell. From, and I know a lot of people at naysayers on a lot of things, and that's all I hear in terms of problems. Is mm. it's probably we have it's probable. Some some people actually say that you wouldn't expect it to say we definitely need to replace it, but I've never heard anyone say we're not going to have to replace it. I have heard concerns about the timing and the means by which we fund it. Right. I think if we use some of that unassigned fund balance, it'll assuage a lot of, of that resistance. And so uh, that would be my thoughts on that. Um, I think that's about all Jamie and I talked about, other than the usual fun chatter that two men have between each other when they talk privately in the hallway. <laughs> okay. Anything else on that topic? Okay. Any other old, other business? Other other business. Oh, excuse me, I skipped training, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Training is an exciting topic that everyone's been looking forward to, right, Miss Lappin? Been there, done that. <laughs> well, as you know, I sent out a bunch of uh, uh, video snippets, yeah, whole meetings, and as well as snippets by subject right. of the two uh, training sessions we had with NHMA mm -hmm. over the course of two years asking people to tell me what they would like to focus on, okay? And I got zero response, <laughs> which means I have zero to say. <coughs> but I did, I did actually 
do some work in terms of what I thought it might be useful. And, uh, and I still welcome you to, to, to think of something you might want to emphasize. Um, so, again, I just a, a reminder of what the purpose of the Budget Committee is to assist the voters. This is right out of the RSA, uh, as well as it's intended to be the budgetary authority, similar to a Legislative Appropriations Committee. That's what we do. That's who we're supposed to be, anyway. These are some of the definitions. Uh, by the way, I, I will get this uh, presentation emailed to you so you can reference it, or I'll put it up on the website. By the way, what do you think about putting up that website? I haven't published it yet. Should I publish it, Mr. Lapp? Why not? Okay. I think it's very informative. You should publish it. Okay. I think a lot well, of people, else will yeah, it will eliminate getting <laughs> a lot of calls. And it's there. It's available. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I still have some tweaking to do because I'm not technically satisfied with it, but once I do, I'll get it up sometime prior to September. How's that? So once when we begin to, can, I we, can we get a, a more definitive answer when it'll be up? <laughs> no, because my wife dictates my time schedule, so <laughs> <laughs> I have to call her in for that one. <laughs> uh, so these are just the definitions that came right out of the law: what appropriate means, what an appropriation is, and purpose. Now it's noteworthy that under purpose, okay. It, it, purpose is defined as a warrant article, or in the case of a budget warrant article, it's a line in the budget. Now, that's not a subline like we talk about sublines all the time. You know, like uh, uh, this is Department of Revenue Administration line items. Right. Now, for decades, we've been going by what's called the municipal chart of accounts, right. which do not relate directly to the Department of Revenue chart of accounts. <laughs> they have their own system. Yeah. yeah. So what happens is, is we do all this voting on the municipal chart of account line items. Oftentimes in the years we've even done it on subline items, which is absurd, because they have no legal meaning. Right. And then the finance director maps all that information into the DRA chart of accounts because that's what the MS, MSA, MSI, MS, MS, MS the MS forms require to be in DRA chart of accounts. So in the past, we've never actually voted on what we were signing on that document <laughs> until last year. Right. And thankfully, Mr. LeBranch uh, saw the wisdom in this, and, and he changed it. So last year, we made motions based on DRA line items. I saw that at the public hearing. That's yeah. what he did last year. Right. Yeah. And so uh, and, you know, I talked to Christy last year, and, you know, because she was a little confused why we're doing that, and I explained it, and she understood totally. And she indicated that she would uh, intend to reformat the budget book to reflect the DRA line items, but we're still going to retain the municipal account subline items. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm not sure exactly how she's going to do that, um, and I, I want to have her come in and explain it to us at some point. In fact, Regina, did you happen to touch base with her on that question? No, I was going to ask you because I didn't know if I was supposed to or you, you said you were going to. I thought you said you were going to see her on Monday, so you were going to ask her. It's a casual thing. We haven't asked her yet. Um, whether um, or not June would be better. Or June or September or whatever, yeah. yeah. Looking for when it would be good, best for her to come in to explain to us uh, uh, that. But that comes under the next meeting topic, which is further down the line. So I just wanted to highlight that there are the key definitions that I think are two key definitions in RSA 32, in terms of what an appropriation means, what appropriate means in a budget. Uh, notice all of this refers to approval by the legislative body. Right. And we all know who the legislative body is, don't we, guys? Uh -huh. It's the town meeting voters. In a town meeting form of government, the legislature is the voters. The Board of Selectmen is called the governing body. They do not have authority to appropriate money. They do have authority to move money from one line item to another line item, but it's limited. Okay? They're not actually appropriating new money. They're just moving money around. Okay? Only the voters, the legislative body, can appropriate money. I just want to emphasize that. This is a, uh, an HMA talking about the, uh, the budget cycle. I don't know if you want to hear this or not, but given that we have it connected, you might want to see something anyway. 
use sort of this figure or this picture here to, to give you an idea of the budget cycle. Obviously, it's, it's, a, it's sort of a constant cycle because, you know, there's preparation of the budget in the fall, that sort of that around that time frame. There's adoption of the budget in March. And then there's just sort of, uh, you know, monitoring of expenditures and getting ready to, again, propose another budget in the fall. Um, and so being aware of the expenditures that are going on and being aware of how the budget is working out is part of the budget committee's role as well. Um, and so this just gives you an idea that that is sort of how the cycle, cycle of life in the budget world works. Cycle of life in the budget yeah. committee. Mm -hmm. It's a constant cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I ran through the 2018 warrants and because I want to get a feel for just how much money we are appropriating. Last year, among all the warrant articles, we appropriated over $66 million. And that did not include the village districts. So between the SAU 90, and that didn't include your renovation bond from the year e before either. Right. So the year before was even larger. But this is the kind of responsibility that we have that I think we could take more seriously than, than, than past years maybe we did. So I would like to see, you know, more, uh, more heads down work on some of this stuff because $66 million, maybe we need it, probably we do, who knows. That's for us and the voters to decide ultimately. But we advise the voters, we advise the legislative body, and we should be cognizant of the fact that last year we advised the voters to appropriate over $66 million. So I just want to highlight that. Not all of us did. Huh? Not all of us did. <laughs> well, we as a body did. Yeah. Right. All right, there are seven key concepts uh, that NHMA presented. And um, this one on the left, which is from 2015, is 45 minutes. This one on the right from 2016 is like an hour and 15 minutes. So guess what? I'm not going to play them. I'm going to leave that to you guys to play it at home. Okay? As I said, I'll get them. I'll get these presentations out to you. And by the way, these you already have them anyway because I sent you these. Right. You sent the, yeah. the full verses in. The, yeah. yeah. So this one is on general principles, which I forgot exactly what's in here. So let me take a peek at it. I don't think it's too long. Ten minutes. Can you tolerate ten minutes? No, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You okay with that, Brian, Mr. Lapham? New Hampshire. We've the first that. thing we try to always emphasize is that um, does New Hampshire have home rule? Uh, and there are some states that have home rule, uh, but we're not one of them. Uh, all the power that towns and cities have come from the legislature. So generally, and, and Margaret and I spent a lot of our time speaking on the phone uh, and answering questions by email. A lot of the time, the first thing we do when someone calls and says, can we do X, like I, I got a call the other day, uh, there was a sophisticated question of a town near the Vermont border, which I think is where the question came from, could we have something called an integrated zoning ordinance? Well, I didn't even know what an integrated zoning ordinance was, but I found out what it was because it's a unique kind of development zoning regulation, which only is in existence in Vermont. So what, what I have to do, I have to do the research in order to provide the answers. So that's what we spend a lot of our time. That's the first thing we do when I get a question like that. Well, is there a statute that says a town can do that? And I quickly know there isn't. There's one in Vermont, but there's not one in New Hampshire. So that's real, a lot of, that's the first thing a lot of times we'll do. Is that a, a statutory power that can be inferred, or a statutory power that can be inferred from another statute that a, a town or city can do something? Um, and it's not enough to say that a law that doesn't say, there's no law that says we can't do it. You really have to find something that says, yes, this is a, an authority a town or a city has, or it can be inferred as inherent to a particular statutory authority. Um, now, one of the, the, the key elements of the budget process is RSA Chapter 32. Everything pretty much that is significant to how the budget committee does its job, because you have an official budget committee, your town meeting voted to have an official budget, budget committee that incorporates certain elements of the statute. Um, 
but it also applies to all towns. So there are standard procedures that are set forth in RSA Chapter 32 that apply to all towns. Uh, then those in particular uh, are a set of rules that apply to towns with an official budget committee. And of course, you all know that the, the key authority that the budget committee has, it's central. And I just would share, again, I was on a budget committee for two years in my town, so I have a little bit of understanding what you go through, but real veterans of a budget committee know that two years is, is hardly anything. In any case, um, the real key authority of the budget committee is you have a break on the ability of the town meeting to raise money. And they can't raise more than 10% above the amount recommended by the budget committee, uh, taking out certain things that are fi called fixed costs. And that's really key to the authority of the budget committee. Um, and I guess uh, the other thing that's key in a town, perhaps not so much like Hampton, but in other towns that have charters, there may be a charter provision. Now, a charter is a form of home rule that is authorized by the legislature. So you have city charters and you have town charters. Uh, for instance, uh, Newmarket has a town charter. Portsmouth is a city charter. So if you had a, a charter, you also might turn to the charter provisions to help you understand how you go about your business of being a budget committee. Um, so as I've said, um, the purpose of the budget law in part um, is to make sure there's a uniform method by which uh, the appropriation and spending by of public funds is carried out. And it, and it applies to all municipal corporations, school districts, village districts, everyone, even if they don't have a budget committee, they're subject to uh, the first, I believe it's seven or eight uh, sections of the budget law. Without a budget committee? Yeah. The first 13? First 13 per, uh, sections of the budget statute, RC Chapter 30, will apply to all towns. Um, one of the things that's in the preamble that uh, it gives us other insight of what the legislature meant, this is in RSA Chapter 32, it says the budget committee in those municipalities that have established one, like Hampton, is intended to have budgetary authority analogous to that of the Legislative Appropriation Committee. So sometimes if you're trying to figure out, well, what's our role in terms of the relationship to the adoption of the budget process in the town meeting, that gives us some insight. That's what the legislator, legislature intended. Um, a couple of other things that are important with the general principles, the, the, the budget law also has other breaks on the action of public officials. Violators, those who spend money without an appropriation or overexpend the bottom line, those people under RSA Chapter 32 can be removed from office. In fact, there's a very well-known case, Blake versus the town of Pittsfield, which I'll mention. Although it doesn't directly touch on the budget law, it highlights the impact of violating the appropriation requirements of any particular department. And in that department, and this happened in the 1980s, the Pittsfield police chief uh, was told repeatedly that he was overexpending his overtime line item uh, and was eventually going to overexpend his budget as a whole. And the select board told him once, twice, three times, don't overstand your budget. And eventually he overspent it again. He had a different opinion about the necessities of public safety, um, and he was removed from office. Now, that was a removal of a police chief, and it wasn't necessarily done under the budget law, but it gives us insight. You know, if you don't follow the guidelines, and, and we'll talk about guidelines in terms of appropriation and bottom line budgeting, um, you can be removed from office. Uh, now, removal isn't automatic, although one of the interesting things about the budget law, which you may all know, um, and uh, this is in RSA Chapter 32.16. If a budget committee member misses four meetings, consecutive meetings, they're out. Uh, I mean, it's automatic. And I think I don't think there's any other statute in the laws that I'm familiar with for public officials where you have an automatic removal. But I think that's, that's unexcused, what it says. Steve. What's that? For consecutive unexcused. I don't, I'm not sure if the word unexcused is in there, but uh, it's 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 for uh, absences. Right. Um, the other uh, uh, limitation or break on the action of the municipal organization that occurs, it's not just an official could have removed, but also the DRA, the Department of Revenue Administration, and they are also kind of looking over your shoulder the whole time in this process. They can disallow appropriations that do not conform to their interpretation of the budget law. And I say that advisedly because sometimes they're not necessarily correct in their interpretation of the budget law, but they can disallow appropriations. Um, again, continuing on with general principles, 
there's really two basic divisions of authority in a town. You've got the legislative body, which is the town meeting, and you've got the governing body. So the governing body can be the select board, the village district commissioners, or the school board. Obviously, the legislative body is always the town meeting, school district meeting, or the village uh, district meeting. Two different distinct organizations. And clearly, uh, I, I think it's fair to understand that it's the legislative body that adopts the budget in the final instance, and uh, that's done by the SB2 ballot here in Hampton. Um, and uh, it's the uh, select board who implements the budget, carries it out during the rest of the year. Um, so budget committees are not required. It is not something that the statute mandates. That is a, a selection, a choice that a town makes. Obviously, Hampton has made a choice to have a town, uh, uh, an official budget committee. Um, you can also have, many towns do have this, an advisory budget committee, Excellent. where uh, it's merely advisory, but the budget committee uh, suggests to the, uh, the town meeting as a whole. I, and one of the things that the Supreme Court has said in a number of its opinions, the role of the budget committee is to do that kind of detailed examination of the spending and proposed spending of the town to make a rational judgment of what what kind of spending a town can actually afford from the point of view of the citizens so that you know the ordinary voter doesn't have to spend the time with those big thick budget books and i've seen them before i've carried them around the town the budget meetings myself you know with line by line of all those information you, you rely on the budget committee to do that digging and to get that information so that those recommendations come to the town meeting in terms of uh, what is eventually proposed for adoption by the town so it's a lot of meetings um, at different stages of the process. I can really tell you my experience, uh, and every town is a little bit different. You know, you've got budget committee governing body meetings, and they can be an unlimited number, um, and they're only subject to the public meeting rules, which we've discussed in 91A. Um, I, I would just uh, then you have budget hearings. And now in in an in SB2 town, I believe, if I'm correct, it's the last the budget hearing has to occur before the second Tuesday of January but don't hold me to that I'd have to go look at our calendar one of the things that we do actually do as a resource and I'll remind you of it we do and we spend a lot of time on it and it's one of our favorite jobs isn't it Margaret we spend about a month putting together these calendars that are on our website they are designed to give now you, you a program, the exact time expect? frame of how you do things from A to Z in a town. Uh, and we have one for SB2 March, April, and May. We have traditional town meeting uh, uh, March and April, and then we have uh, a uh, general, calendar. general calendar. And so they're there. So if you have a question, gee, what's the date we have to hold that budget hearing? You, know, you can go to that calendar, you can look at it. Um, and then you also have, uh, as I said, you have budget hearings you have to have, and then you have the deliberative session, which in a sense is another hearing. Uh, because it's the, the opportunity for the voters to come out and discuss, debate, and potentially amend some of the Warren article within certain rules which are set forth in RSA Chapter 40. Yeah. Good so, stuff. Any thoughts on general principles? Anything come to mind you'd like to emphasize? It's funny they mentioned Portsmouth. You know, we only have 13 cities in the state. And Cities are much different. I mean, a city council has much more authority. They approve everything. Well, they are the legislative the, body. Well, yeah, but they approve the school. Unlike here, we have a school board that approves theirs. <coughs> have, but they approve everything. But that's because they are the legislative. That's right. The, see, guys, that's the difference between a city and a town. Yep. In a city, we have city councils, or a town, we have town councils. Those councils are the legislative body. The voter is not that's the correct. legislative body. The beauty of a town meeting is... The voters are the legislative body. That's right. Only they can appropriate money. Yeah, it's quite different. When you're in a, in a, in a council form of government, all you get to do is vote for personalities. <laughs> you don't get to vote on anything of substance, just personalities. Nine people bunch make of, a decision. A bunch of promises that <laughs> seem to rarely come to fruition, and then when they do, people complain about that. So <laughs> <laughs> but it is quite interesting. So a town meeting is unique. It's precious. In fact, the United States could not have been established without it. That sense of self-government that town meeting engendered is what gave our founding fathers of this country the passion to put everything on the line. Everything, everything, even their own children on the line. To fight a war against the most powerful country on the planet at the time, Britain. 
And one of the things for you, one of the kind of students in the audience, we became an SB2 town in 1997. And interesting enough, more people have voted since then, but we've actually approved more monies, millions of dollars via SB2 when the original intent was thinking we're going to save money, uh, the, the Senator Keogh at the time, the legislature. But I find it ironic. We've actually spent more the other way through this system versus the old town meeting where when you left mm -hmm. there, you not only had your, I mean, you walked out of there, you know, saying these warrant articles were approved. You walked out of Winnicott High School, wherever you were, and the budget was approved versus now it's it's a whole process as was outlined there. So it's just kind of fascinating. It's been 21 years. Uh, it's amazing how time flies. But Yeah. Anything else on, uh, that's it, thoughts on general principles? I thought that was a particularly good slide because it wasn't Very too good. long. A yeah. little bit long on the two, but not too long. I like the others. And... I thought it gave a general overview of, of what uh, what we need to do. As far as uh, uh, I also had something here on multi-year contracts, because it's something I think we pay too little attention to, multi-year contracts. And you can see I grabbed some information from NHMA's webpage, which it says uh, that specific statutory authority permitting municipalities to enter into multi-year contracts is vested in the legislative body. Not the governing body, the legislative body. Clearly says right there. Yet we don't often see that actually playing out, do we? So I think we need to probably pay a little bit more attention as a budget committee to um, those uh, errors of omission, shall we call them? Mm. Now, multi-year lease agreements are also considered multi-year contracts right. and are subject to, because uh, they're considered long-term debt, like a bond, require a three-fifths majority vote. Now, I'm bringing this up because this is one of the points that I think is going to be brought up this year in the budget session because of Article 13 of 2018, was a five-year lease for two garbage trucks. Okay. Now, this passed, as you can see it on the bottom, by 50.6%. And we're leasing those trucks. Now, as you recall, last year when we reviewed this, it was like, we have an escape clause that if it doesn't get funded in the subsequent year, we can get out of the contract without, without cost. Mm -hmm. Right? So what this means is you can anticipate seeing another warrant article to appropriate money for the second year in this contract, and so forth. Okay? One of the problems that, that I see with this is a practical one, is that what if the voters decide not to approve it in year two or three, for example? Now, you know, we have this thing called the no means no law. When the voters say no, that means you can't find some other way of funding that. You can't do it at all. And so if they say no in year three, for example, that means we can't go on these, these, these garbage trucks, so what do we do for garbage trucks? <laughs> so that becomes you know, a potential operational problem. Um, but you can also see that if they put in a fully sanborinized uh, warrant article here, which would have required a three-fifths vote, it wouldn't have passed, and we wouldn't be able to lease them at all. So that's apparently the give and take. I believe the town manager several meetings ago actually made mention of, of having to reappropriate money in subsequent years on sure, this. Yeah. So he knew right. at the yeah, time. Yeah, I believe that's the plan that we'll have a similar. Right, exactly. Yeah. So I just want to highlight, I'm only highlighting those things which I think are well, general things to keep in mind as well as things that might come up this year. Okay. So any, any thoughts or comments on that? No. I, I was going to expand, but I didn't. This, I spent a lot of time on RSA 32, 11, emergency expenditures, but all of that work is for naught now because we're going for a special, special town meeting instead of using this mechanism. Yeah. Mm. So I'm not going to get into that. Could I just say one thing? On, I, I mean, this is the first I heard as far as using part of the... You know, instead of like, let's say we the bond's going to be 
I guess we're with the auxiliary pipe included, we're looking between five and six million. So the plan right now is it looks like it's going to be approximately seven hundred and fifty yeah. thousand. We'll take that. We'll you know directly finance that, and then the auditors will take that out of the unassigned fund balance that portion anyway. And then the plan was to make that go back on to the bond. But now what you're saying is, if instead, like let's say it's 5.5 .5 million, mm -hmm. so we would perhaps take 2 million from the unassigned fund and then only finance the 3.5. I'm just throwing it. Yeah, no, of two. I, I think two is probably a minimum. I think probably yeah, I mean, the yeah, rational just, way to approach it would be to say, what is the minimum we want to have in the uh, right. Well, I think balance, that's the major and concern. And then subtract that from what we actually have and say, that's the amount we're going to put aside to reduce this bond. That would be the most rational. <coughs> I think, I think um, you have a couple issues here, though, and you have to be careful. And as Regina's pointed to, the manager specifically stated last night that the quote 750000 would come out of the budget. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but it was going to be backfilled by yes. be, be, being put in the bond. But hold yes. on. But yes, but hold on to it because. The discussion is going to be imperative of how this is going to get funded. I don't think you're going to have any problem with the voters passing this. I what agree what I do think is going yeah. to be the issue, when you talk about unassigned fund balances, you're talking people around this table that have already paid in prior years. So that's it's like saying we're going to take money that others have had to absorb in their taxes and throw it at a project. I, I only bring that up because I think there's going to be a couple sides to this issue. Um, anybody that has been involved with large bonded projects, like the school, for instance, normally accepts the idea that this thing that passes, and I firmly believe it's going to get to three-fifths. I, I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. As a matter of fact, I mean, I'm promoting it, a lot of people are. The, in my mind, I'm thinking a bond, you know, to whatever years that would be, whatever cost. I think, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm just putting it out because Regina and her board has a big decision, decision allowed town management. We might be going down a road as a town that might put people in different lines of thinking if we start saying, well, we're going to pick two million from an unassigned fund balance and we're going to take the rest and, you know, the 13,000 we're going to be paying a week for the, the rental. I'm using rental for the this the surface right. I know th those are decisions you have to make but to your point mr. chairman I think that's a discussion that's certainly going to happen once we get the approval to go this route ie right. the town meeting then it's going to go to that I think that discussion is going to be open up for a, I right. think Brian makes an excellent comment here I think it's an important to keep in mind that what we're talking about here is what the hell we have an unassigned fund balance for all right, and whether or not we have an excess amount there now or not. Mm -hmm. Every year the selectmen take money out of that unassigned fund balance to quote unquote reduce the tax, tax rate. rate. Well, yep. this would in essence reduce the tax rate because we wouldn't exactly. have to be bonding less. Exactly. And it will also make the fiscal impact statement on the bond less. Okay. Now, when you have an excess of amount in the unassigned fund balance, you know what happens? Pet projects get funded through them. Oh, we saw that mm -hmm. in a couple of instances. Yeah. Oh, look at this is this is I have by the way on this website. I also have more articles from past years. No, well, I, I understand. And here, hundred thousand dollars to study flooding. Uh, tech upgrade, hundred and twenty thousand dollars, all coming out of the unassigned fund balance. And I'm just picking out a couple. There were several in here that were passed last year with the no fiscal impact on it because it were taken out of the unassigned fund balance. Well. I think we have more useful um, application for that unassigned fund balance in the form of the sewer pipes, reducing the cost of the bond, than by dealing with pet projects like fixing the blacksmith shop, which is another one that we, we, we pulled out. I mean, the black shop, <laughs> that should stand on its own with its own fiscal impact statement. Okay? So. That, that's my statement. I, I understand what you're saying, Brian, yeah, yeah. but what I'm saying is, is that it's clear based on activities that people perceive we have too much in the unassigned fund balance because we're spending things for pet projects in it in addition to using it to reduce taxes. But I, I think so obviously we have too much there. And if we have too much there, let's use it for the best possible purpose, 
which is to get the most important project we have on our plate right now, I think get it discounted in terms of the impact on the taxpayer. I, I, I think that point is somewhat relevant, but I think we have Somewhere? to... Well, because I mean, I you wouldn't give a greater weight than that? <laughs> well, no. Well, no. But the, the reason I bring that up is, and Frank and I were talking about this before the meeting, we've got some major bonded expenditures that we're going to face in the next 15 years. So we, better be, we have to be careful that we're not picking and choosing. So is this the right time to say, we're going to, because this pipe is so needed, there's all this extra money, let's take it out. We've still got fame. No, no, it's not just that. Well, it's well, this not. is an emergency situation. Oh, I understand. So much so oh, I'm not that we're going to the State House asking for a special town meeting. Right. That's the kind of emergency it is. But remember, this I don't is think not like other things. No, at but all. I don't think anybody's you're absolutely right. We're not saying we it's not gonna shouldn't pass. I'm talking about how we fund it. So on I because I, I think you've got how phase we use two. the unassigned fund balance. Yeah. Well you've got phase two of the treatment plant coming. Then we've got phase three. We're talking another, what, $28 million. We haven't even got into the discussions of what happened in a, uh, uh, a meeting with former public works director John Hangen 20 years ago when he said we're going to be faced with spending 50 to 80 millions on our road in this town. Regina knows that. I'm just putting well, it out yeah, there. You spent I, over $2 million on one block on Lafayette Road. I, You're absolutely right. I agree with you. And I, I, all I'm saying is I, don't, I think what... Selectman Barnes and the selectman are doing is absolutely correct in the management of the town. What I'm saying is I think there will be a debate on how we fund, whether emergency or not. Because and apparently you and I are going to be flow leaders on that. <laughs> so let's look forward to that. Yeah. But anyway, I think it's great discussion. I mean, it's yeah. just, I'm yeah, just putting it, it out there as an opinion. That I think it's a great discussion, too. And I, I sort of agree with both of you because, I mean, one, I don't know what the exact amount in the assigned fund funds is I just know around six million mm -hmm. and then we got to figure out you know you got to look at everything because we also don't want to be in a position where we don't have anything in that fund bingo well, even if exact. it's even if it's I mean the state requires us to have this and this Certain and this amount. but having the amount in there that we normally have sustained since manager Welch has been here it yeah. does help also on our borrowing rate mm -hmm. so go. that's all things that but at the same t and I know that discussions I've had with Fred he also is looking toward you know at least being able to do what we normally do at the end of the year and put you know some back designated to just offset the tax sure. rate absolutely so but I think that Chairman Jones also has a really good argument too, but I think we haven't quite gotten to that yet, so yeah, we'll I don't think numbers. anything we'll should get be the numbers out right and now. That will yeah. be the, yep. that will be the Once we get this bill, hopefully, where it needs to be. Absolutely. Then. Okay. Good. Any other other business? I have uh, went to the town hall today and went to the budget committee's bucket there, a basket at the finance director. What do they call it? A basket, a bucket, whatever it is. Yeah. Where they stuff the budget committee communiques and printed form. You mean like little drawers like we used to have? Yeah, oh, they're still up there. They're not drawers though, they're just like <laughs> shelves. <laughs> shelves, that's right. <laughs> so I have, holes. I have six <laughs> quarterly reports for the month of May of 2018. I have one income expense statement from April, oh, excuse me, from May 10. But that was one from March 23 and two from March 2nd. So these things have been sitting around for a while. I, I think that maybe we could, uh, you know, put a little less stress on Christy and say, hey, you know, digitized documents are. Oh, she only does five copies. Yeah. Now. Well, we got six from May. Well, I need one. Well, <laughs> then we only have five left. You know that. <laughs> I do put this on the website, doesn't it? No, I got one. Doesn't put that. So the point is, is that we're going to have. That's on the website, but one of those I think is the Chief's AOTS quarterly report. Oh, I'd like to see that yeah. one. Chief yeah, Mary Faith? Louise requested that those start coming. That was here. a great report. He did. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see that Get too. That, yeah. Yeah. I don't see. No, I don't think so. And I, she said she wanted it for the entire budget committee. I assumed it would be multiple copies. Yeah. That's actually the reason why I went there, because I assumed it would be a big That batch. would be good to get those. But this was all that was there. I grabbed it. Quarterly report will give you insight into what Hampton Fire Rescue has done. Is that the March 18, or May 18 one? 2018? Yeah. yeah. Fire is highlighted there. Yeah. Oh. Right, but didn't you say Selectman Woolsey has requested that we all get a copy of that? I think, is yeah, that this them? Is, this I is, think this that's them. Oh, this is them. You have yeah. all. But so. I, I would suggest 
that we consider when Selectman Wolsey or others want to particularly get something in front of our face, that they just simply need to send us an email with a link Absolutely. to the document yeah, yeah. rather than tearing down trees to print up these papers. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. why, yeah, well, that's why we went to just five copies. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I'll take another one of those. It's like my computer down. down. Yeah. Well, Frank, 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 Frank would I'll like one. one of the last ones. Yeah, this is How can you get two? Thank you. No, not that one. Thank you. The, the the this is really oh. good information. There's only one left. Are you looking for the financial? I like oh, no, the financial. Oh, he's looking for the financial. The income expense statements? Yeah. yeah. Dated May 10? Yeah. I assume all these documents, uh, Regina, that she prints out there are on the website already. Yes, and I know she always, because yeah. when I get the financials, I actually get it twice, because I get it as a selectman, and then I get it as, so I think she emails like them these. all. Yeah. Right. But she prints five copies right. and your computer's down. Well, we cut it down more advantageous to have so you can have email us all a copy or should we go to the website and print it? She usually emails. Yeah, she emails. Well, she was for a while, but I think she does not really, I don't think it's really necessary to be honest with you, unless, for example, you have a selectman Wolsey specifically wants it to be in her face, hey, then they should send us an email. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, uh, we should just be confident that the financial reports are under the financial category on the website. I mean, when I need oh, I've them, seen that. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. I need them, that's where I go. Yeah, I just absolutely. Go there, and I'm looking at multiple months at a time. Yep. I don't have to run around my office looking for well, where did I put that month's piece of right. paper? Because it's just the work is less likely to get done less efficiently. So I think using the digital form is much more superior. When we were living with 15 people. It was a lot easier, you know, just to make a couple copies. Now it's. Well, right. and then there's right 15 people, that some of them which didn't have. You know, yeah. The Three or four people didn't have inclinations. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's right. That problem has dissipated because Frank is broken. Frank is an expert on <laughs> computer operations, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You have to be. You're a school board member, button. dude. Where's the delete button? <laughs> Okay, now, uh, one other thing that Christy ran me down for when I was down <coughs> in town hall a few weeks ago was to tell me that there's a budget book from, the, from NHMA. Did you cause a budget book from NHMA to occur? I thought we requested that. Yeah. I believe that. But apparently only one came down, which I thought was rather curious. Yeah, you would say there was only one. I don't know why it is. One? Well, what do you mean one came down? Yeah. I one thought you copy. said there was a, co oh, there it is. a copy of the basic budget law oh. that Christy oh, gave me. One copy. Oh. Right. oh. For 20, 2017. Right. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get it. I think she told me she had Did you ask for one, Mr. Lavin? I did. Right. And did you ask for one, Mr. Lavin? I did not request one you did personally, not. but if Mr. Lapham would like to... <laughs> Take it and well, I can. I can't do that because, you know, the person's name on this is <laughs> it's my Brian name. Warburton, which I thought was weird because she said, Hey, this is for Brian. And I thought, Oh, Latin finally got his book. Yeah. I remember you asking for <laughs> it. Must and I got it. home and I looked and I said, uh Oh, because I held it for a few days thinking, Well, Brian's going to be calling me anyway well, for something no, else. And I'll give it to him then. The right beginning of the meeting. <laughs> okay, Brian's. <laughs> which Brian? So, this raised the question in my mind as I got to thinking about this. I did read some of it, which is actually pretty valuable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would be glad to review it, and then I'll give it I, to my you, colleague, yes. Mr. Lapham. <laughs> you go on the, uh, the the website, and they charge 35 bucks for this thing, which, yeah. which used to be free, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But now they charge 35 bucks for it. It's well worth it. I mean, the information yeah. is, they, they really have I some. think every member on the committee ought to have one. What do you think? Yeah, I, I know do last do. time I think she just copied it, right? We had the one yeah. copy that she copied. I don't know who copied it. No, this. I have a copy from two years ago. Yeah, and this is 2017, we, not 2018. We got some. Yeah, yeah. the green one. Yeah, but it's not current anymore. No. So are we looking for the 2018? A lot of it. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we, we ought to find some way of getting the 2018 budget book for every budget committee member. Um, yeah, that might come out. I thought that maybe comes out later in the summer. I think I asked the well, question on the out. next one. Yeah. Um, so maybe we can just have her 
copy it. I think it. it'd probably be out. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to pay nine times well, thirty-five that's, that's dollars. Seventeen. That's going to cost. I know, but I'm saying copy maybe a two thousand. Yeah, you know, I'd be glad to look to see if it's available in two thousand eighteen. There's got to be somebody, or maybe you can call the time involved and everybody. So I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, if we get the one, we are entitled to a free seminar every year. And my impression is this year that perhaps that won't be used. Well, yeah. Have them send a book instead. Yeah. And so I'm thinking maybe if we had <laughs> we used to get our selectman's rep call them up and say, in exchange for you guys trudging down here yeah. and spending all yeah. that time, so how many why don't you give us some books? Yeah. Well, it would be great if each selectman got one too, I think. Yeah. All right, so we let's round it to 15. City copies. Yeah, that's right. In town 15. and city, we used to get selectman and book. 2018. So budget. which which brain or Brian should which get this? Which brain? <laughs> I, the person who was addressed to first, <laughs> and I'll get it back. The person who requested response. it first. I'll give it to the person who was addressed well, to. All right, I'll there go you go. Legally. And I'll, in June, I'll give it to you. Okay. How's that? <laughs> so that, that, that takes care of that. Um, thank you, Regina, for following up thank on that you, and getting us free it's books. It's only $525. Books. And if you is need that the how money, much it is? Frank, yeah. Yeah. I was going to just it's do that. The school board rep said he'd take care of it. So they should definitely give us those for not having a conference. Funding of these do we have enough knowledge? <laughs> okay. I don't think we should have to pay for it. I agree. No. Yeah. Especially when we pay over seventeen thousand yeah. dollars a year in dues. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say I thought it was around seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, any other 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 business? Yeah, other than the special special town meeting. And we're meeting in June? Uh, that's what the next <laughs> item is. When is our next meeting? June nineteenth. I want you to keep in mind that when I talked to Jamie, um, it seems probable in my mind he didn't commit to anything. Um, but it seems probable we're going to have to have a public hearing for the bond. Yeah. And that's likely sure. to occur sometime in July. Yes. It's the pursuing a town meeting in at the end of August. Um, and we have to hold that. Correct. Yeah. You have to by law. Yeah. Right. And maybe we we'll want a brief meeting in June. Town meeting session one, also called the deliberative session, will then follow about eight or ten days after that. And possibly selectman bonds will have information, more information, not only on TV, we watch the meetings, but by June 19th. And to Mr. Lapham's point, we can have that meeting here and kind of like see the, the roadmap of where we're going. So yeah. we will seek to have the meeting, the public hearing on the bond here as we seek all of our meetings. Absolutely. This, this yeah. Here. Yep. And so we're probably going to be meeting in July. We don't have a definitive sense of Christie's availability to describe the budget book. I did have the idea of getting Christy, or uh, Regina, to get Christy to generate a, <coughs> a uh, summary of all of our funds and how much money is in it. Uh, but I don't think that requires her to be in a meeting to do that. A simple report will do. Yeah. So, Similar to what she prepared last year? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, again, uh, trying to avoid unnecessary meetings, uh, June becomes kind of a question mark in my mind. Why are we meeting in June? When you consider that we will probably be meeting in July, right? Not necessarily at our usual third Tuesday of the month, but we we'll probably will be meeting. We can have a regular meeting prior to or after the public hearing on the bond. I think we hold it. I think we put it out there. If we don't need to meet, we don't need to. But I mean, there may be a reason we don't know yet. Okay. There may be, maybe well, some we'll more just information. Well, we say tentatively June nineteenth, right. and if you send us an email saying we're okay. going to be meeting in July, that's fine. Well, I, I will. How about I say this? I'll say there'll, there'll be no June meeting, but it will be subject to call the chair if, if something comes up that I feel like you know it's worthy to have the meeting. Oh, that's fine. That's Otherwise, fine. we were all planning on having a July meeting sometime, mm -hmm. whether it's third Tuesday or not. I'll keep you informed. Uh, yeah. Okay. To the extent that I have knowledge on that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as soon as I know more on dates, I'll. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like I say, keep watching fast, them but... selectman's meetings. I mean, you get a lot oh, of. Oh, absolutely, yeah. they will happen. Yeah, yeah fast. Yeah. Oh, so I think it's going to move. No quick. meeting in June. <laughs> no meeting presently, Unless the chair but calls. it may be called. You know, so be aware it could be called. Yeah. Not okay. not anticipated. <laughs> but you'll have an email going out to all right. of us. Indicate I'm not going to get send out an email canceling a June meeting. No, no. Send out, send out an email saying we will be indicating one, right? that a meeting will take place right. June such and such. Right. 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 And I will try to make that at least a one week advance thing. Okay. I, yeah. I, I can't control well, events. Days, no. So it's it's fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm you say fine. a week. I will try for a week, just like yeah. I canceled the <laughs> April meeting like uh, weeks ahead of time. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, that gives gives everyone an opportunity to have a personal life uh, planned as you desire. Right. 
Makes sense to me. Do you have any intentions of having an August? <laughs> awesome in Florida. I can't call uh, that. No, uh, August is is like absolutely. We never have ever. Right. In the history yeah, we've never of, had a meeting. In August. By the way, the budget committee was created in 1954, guys. By the time of Hampton, in case you were wondering, and uh, <laughs> and during that time, we have never met in August. Fine. We have met a few times in July. Yes. Oh, that's fine. I'm but that, that itself is rare. Me. That itself is rare. In any case, uh, given the special special time meeting. Uh, I say special, special, because yeah. we're going through a special process to create a special town meeting. Um, given that special, special town meeting <coughs> will happen in August, apparently, there will be no real room to have a budget committee meeting. Although, technically, we'll be having a budget committee meeting as we do at the end of every delivery session. At the end of every session one, yeah. we have a budget committee meeting right. to potentially reconsider our vote. Right after we hear from the public, just like we do in a public hearing. And I think as you alluded to, and Mr. Sullivan said he's right, we're not going to get away from the process is still going to be there, right. but when we find out those dates, it's going to go like you're going to be required. This is going to be this date, this date, this date, this date, and then we're going to have the vote. So, yeah, we all should be ready for that because I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, by the way, I heard some noise from non-members about the agenda. Uh, uh, the, the, the non-existence of it. Anybody have any issue with how I'm handling the agenda? No. I have well, we no have an agenda. Issue. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, this is an agenda. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's right. it. Well, some people want it out like a week ahead of time and on the website. And oh, so, that's my, my attitude is that we have no public comment at our meetings. So uh, we're not trying to encourage or discourage people from showing up with an agenda. Right. Uh, it should be on the front of the building. No, the, the, we, the, the only thing that's legally required, and it was sent, as I think you know, I sent a, I had uh, Christina uh, send the meeting notice, which is required by law. I mean, that was put out on Friday morning. It's required 24 hours ahead of time. And so that's what my intent is uh, going forward, is just to put out a meeting notice and leave it at that, and then put on an agenda um, the day of the meeting, all right? Uh, because frankly, you know, a lot of this agenda, if I had done it up ahead of time, would have been very different because the selectman's decisions last night, you know, ripped away all the discussion on 32 colon 11, for example. You know, ripped away. I had I had a lot of discussion to go on, on on how you go about getting a special time meeting, no longer applicable to our immediate right. sense. So again, the selectman, what they do the night before, has a real impact on what our agenda yeah, will have to right. be. So I don't want to commit to an agenda until the day of our meeting and unless you guys yeah, I'm fine with need that. to I'm fine with that, that okay. makes perfect sense mm -hmm. okay okay good so I thank you guys for your support and uh, I guess uh, we're going to be adjourning unless someone has anything else to comment on. I will make a motion to adjourn second and it is so done we are adjourned thank you guys Can you